Hey guys, I'm going to be starting a series of tutorial videos showing you how to set up and maintain a Linux home server. Uh, it is pretty handy to have one of these if you can uh, because you can do things like file sharing and you can have a web server. So for instance, I don't use web services to host my files. So things like Dropbox or RapidShare, I just post them on my own server and I can link people directly to them from there and there's no wait time and things like that. So the, the first video is going to be how to install and set up the actual server and after that if there's enough people interested I'm going to have tutorial videos on how to set up software, things like web servers and file sharing and even some virtualization stuff. So first of all you're going to want to grab a copy of Ubuntu server. So first you got to figure out which computer you're going to install it on and then see if it's 32-bit or 64-bit. Most newer computers are 64-bit so if it's a new computer you would choose 64-bit. If it's a old computer it might be 32-bit or 64-bit. If you really don't know use 32-bit because that will run on all machines. Next you're going to want to choose which version. I will include a link to both of these pages, the download page and this page. You're going to want to choose the version that is supported the longest. So right now it's 10.04 so you're going to choose that one. And then you're going to start a download I already have it so I don't actually need to download it. And down here there are some resources that will help you along if you don't know how to install it on the computer. So you can install it off of a CD drive or you can install it off of a USB flash drive. There are directions down here on how to do it. Okay, so once you have that downloaded you're gonna boot a computer off of it, the computer you want to install the server on. In my case, it will be a virtual computer. Okay, and then you're going to go through the installation process. You're going to be prompted for some settings like your language settings, keyboard settings. Most of these you can just take the defaults on, like I am. You're going to want to choose a host name. I'm going to call mine YouTube. You can call yours whatever you want. Here's the first kind of challenging part. If you can't figure out what I do in the directions how I'm going to explain this, you can just select guided use entire disk and that will set it up but may not be as specific as you would like. So I'm going to go into manual mode. Okay, right now um, I just have one virtual hard drive set up, so you're going to go down to that drive, hit enter, and then select yes for creating a new partition table. And see down here you have free space. Select the free space, create a new partition. I'm going to select, let's say, 5 gigabytes for the operating system primary beginning all right and just take all the defaults hit done setting up the partition the next one is going to be where you store all of your data so create a new partition take the default for the that primary partition and then for the mount point down here select slash SRV all right, and then select Done, setting up the partition. Um, if you have more than one hard drive, instead of them both being under this SCSI 3 drive, it would be under a different drive. It would be a different drive, and you would just have one partition for each drive instead of two partitions under one drive. Like I said, if you can't figure this out, just do uh, guided use entire disk instead of manual, and it will set this up. Not as well set up as this but it will set it up. It will just be one giant partition. Um, 
you have not selected any partitions for swap space, eh, you generally don't need swap space if you have more than half a gigabyte of RAM. So do you want to return? No. Do you want to write changes to disk? Yes. Alright, at this point you're going to want to type in a name. I'm just going to type in Sean, because that's my name. Username for your account, same thing. Choose a password. And you're going to want to select no for encrypting your home directory. No proxy. And it's going to go through a little more setup now. Next, you should select Install Security Updates Automatically. That will make sure that any security-based updates, if someone finds a flaw in the operating system, they'll patch it and you'll automatically get it. So um, here, uh, just hit Enter, which will skip over that. We'll install everything else manually. All right, at this point, you're going to want to install grub to the master boot record, so hit yes. And this is the last part of the installation. Um, continue. At this point, you can take the CD or flash drive out of the computer. We're done installing the system. It's all set. So this is what it boots up to. This is the interface you get. It doesn't boot up to graphics like Windows and stuff. It just boots to a command line. So log in. OK, first thing is hold down Control and press L. That will clear the screen and we'll get started with this. So first thing you want to do is type in this command type in your password and then do control L again and type in this command and what this is going to do enter when it says yes or no the Y is capitalized so it's default press enter what this is going to do is go out and get all the updates for your server so you'll have this is the equivalent of Windows updates uh, so this makes sure that you have the most up-to-date features and all the security things have been patched alright so it made it through that process and how long that takes will depend on the type of computer you installed it on, so it didn't take that long for this system. Alright, so it finished, and now I'm going to restart the system. So you do that with this command. And anytime you start a command with sudo, it may ask you for your password, you just type it in, hit enter. and we wait for it to reboot. All right, now log in again. And as you can see right here, we're only using 32 megabytes of memory. So after updates, it's using 30 megabytes of memory. That's very small. So you can run this on pretty much any computer. It'll still run. All right, now I'm going to show you how to install software so you can remotely manage this computer so you don't have to be at this command line all the time at the computer. You can do it from another computer, a Windows computer, uh, or a Linux or Mac computer. So do sudo apt get, whoops, learn to spell, ss8, actually install ssh so sudo apt get install ssh 
All right, you're going to want to hit enter or Y and enter. And this will install an SSH server. Control L and then type this command, if config. All right, now you're going to want to look at this top section up here. Um, I don't have a mouse cursor right now, but okay, so right here where it says internet address 192.168.1.113. So you're going to want to remember those numbers, and then I'm going to be using software called Putty because I'm on Windows. Um, Linux has an equivalent to the software built in, so does Mac. But uh, type in the IP address and then log in. And it might ask you the first time if you want to trust this computer, just hit the yes. And then, but yeah, you're in the computer. It's basically like you are at the computer, except it's in a window within your Windows computer. This makes things a little easier because you can paste commands in here. Uh, it gives you a lot more screen space. And, yep, so another soft piece of software called WinSCP. You can also do this with FileZilla. That's a good one. Uh, but WinSCP is a little bit quicker in this case. Alright, type the host name, hit login. It's going to ask you for a username and a password. And then it connects you. So this is the uh, hard drive of the server. So if you want to, for instance, drag a file into there, you can just copy it and it will copy it into there and you can use it so if there's a file you need to transfer to that computer this is a good way to do it and I will carry out the rest of the tutorial using putty because it's easier to work with so you will most likely not see the actual screen of the computer for the most part you will be in a putty window so you can use that same method to connect to it. Just boot up to this computer, use ifconfig, and then read the internet address. It'll be either ETH0, or if you're using wireless, it will be WLAN0. I would not recommend using wireless. Uh, I would recommend using actual wires to connect it to the internet because it's a little more reliable and stable but uh, yeah this is going to be the end of my first video it's all set up actually I should probably tell you how to shut down um, you can shut down either at the computer or through a putty window I'm gonna do it at the computer so you can see so you do sudo space halt type in your password and then shut down so let me know guys how did you are in this I will do more videos my next video is probably gonna be a minecraft server so let me know the interest level you guys have in this and I'll keep putting videos out if you're interested so thanks for watching see ya